Hello, this is Julian with Coffer Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Galogesha WX Wash Processed Ecuador from Colfea Circular. And there's the jar right there. And Colfea Circular, based out of Arendal, Norway. And this coffee was featured in our most recent Blind Taste Test Rankings video, where it finished the fourth place out of seven high-end Panamanian and Ecuadorian coffees on that day. And this coffee was the biggest standout from that video due to its vibrancy and intensity, making it the easiest coffee to pick out from that lineup. Now, one quick note before we start discussing this coffee is that Colfea Circular only sold this one in 40 gram jars, meaning we had to purchase two of them to have enough coffee to review. So let's go ahead and start discussing it as this right here is day 38. And recipe we went with for this coffee was Colfea Circular's recipe, which is a 15 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 95 degrees Celsius, about 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And once again, I didn't have a huge preference in terms of brew method for this one, but once again, since our tasting wheel was made with the V60, I will say maybe a very slight preference towards the V60, indicating a more medium fine grind. Now, roast profile for this one, Cofea Circular definitely still holds true to the term Nordic Light, as this one is a very light coffee by most standards and metrics. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 15, first impression, and that was the blind taste test day. And as mentioned, this coffee immediately stood out due to the slight fermentiness that was reminiscent of the listed wild strawberry that they had on here. And it was a dead giveaway considering that when I was brewing this coffee, I could really smell a very strong, wild, and intense aroma from this one. And that's why I was able to pick up the cup and immediately detect that it was this coffee because I knew that this is the only one that was going to have that level of vibrancy and intensity right from the start. As a result, this one actually felt a little bit more like a natural processed coffee than a wash processed coffee. But in addition to all of those things, there was a peachy, bright aspect and plenty of the classic Colfea Circular citric spice aspect that I often describe as bergamot. But at least with this coffee, there's a bergamot note listed on here, so I was kind of fully expecting that from this one. But as a result, it was a pretty solid first impression, if maybe not necessarily what I was expecting. We continue on to day 18, opted for the Chemex, and this one offered a lot of similar attributes to the first cup as it was offering an intense berry aspect, very much in line with the listed wild strawberry. And I do appreciate the fact that they have a wild strawberry listed on here as opposed to just strawberry, because I do think that, that details just how intense it was right from the onset, as underneath that, there were some more of those peachy aspects, as well as the herbality with a strong focus on the bergamot-like attribute. Once again, very vibrant throughout, very intense coffee. We continue on to day 25 opted for the April Brewer, and the coffee had actually been the best up to this point by a significant distance, as this was the cleanest the coffee had turned out with much more definition to the strawberry forward aspect of this one, and a little bit more definition to the listed bergamot as well, as both of these things felt really well defined, especially for just how much intensity there was within both of them. In addition to that, the peachiness was the most prominent it had been up to this point, with an intense long lasting finish once again. Definite improvement, we continue on to day 28. First time we opted for Cofea Circular's recipe with the V60 and the cup was the best it had been up to this point with a slight bit more definition to the listed wild strawberry as it came off as this very unique, somewhat fruit nectar, fruit jello-like strawberry sweetness with more of the slight herbality and tropicality akin to a kiwi. Intense throughout, reminiscent of a natural, -like, uh, natural process like coffee once again. So that's been consistent. We continue on to day 31, opted for the Chemex with Colfea Circular's recipe, and this is the most toned down the cup had been up to this point with the strawberry and citrus still dominating the cup, but at this time it was reminiscent of a strong strawberry kiwi juice with an almost seedy quality to it, so I could say that there was maybe like a little bit of a red raspberry sort of component. And in addition to that, a strong fruit profile with a slight fermentiness that continues to remain reminiscent of, for lack of a better term, jello. Day 34, our final note that we do have, I tried it one more time through the April Brewer and I feel like I had a slight preference towards the V60 from that experience as the previous two experiences offered not quite as much fermentiness. This one seems to have a little bit more of that. So it's kind of interesting because the coffee had been trending in a positive direction 
with the slight adjustments we had made. <clears throat> but given that we had had such a positive first impression with the April Brewer, going back to it, I expected that maybe that's what we were going to get. The Bergamont aspect, though, was as intense as it had ever been up to this point. Strong spiced tea aspect remains very strong and pronounced with a intense strawberry-like component to it. Hence why I feel like I had a slight preference towards the V60 and even the Chemex for this one. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And we have <clears throat> four level fives. So let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the finish level five. Yes, I don't think that will come as a surprise to anybody because this one is intense throughout right from the start to the finish. It very much begins with that strong strawberry intensity and then throughout it continues to offer that while the citric like component to it is also very much present and ever present in this one. So both of those things definitely justified at that level five. We continue on to the berry fruit level five. I've been harping on that since the moment I even opened this jar as this jar smells intense and you can feel all of those very strong strawberry aspects right from the aroma to the grind to the coffee to actually tasting the coffee. Everything within it has a very strong strawberry intensity. Maybe one of the most vibrant strawberry forward coffees we've ever had. So that's one of those things where you could say it would go all the way up to a six if the tasting wheel went that high. Citrus fruit, level five. With all those things that I've said, the bergamot-like aspect to it is equally as vibrant and intense as that strawberry component. So it justified that level five as well. Those two things really seemed to play off of each other a lot within this coffee. And we have a lot of level fours. We will actually start on the other side with the acidity level four. Yes, this one also still had a fair bit of brightness to it, and I can attribute that to a number of things, that of course being the very strong red fruit component to it, but most specifically the citric aspect to it. It had brightness and all of those things, so definitely a fair bit of that. Florality, level four, yes, and oftentimes when it comes with this very red floored, red intense cup of coffee, my mind immediately goes to a hibiscus or something like a rose. This one right here, Given that it had that savory spice quality to it, it will once again fall in line with a little bit more of that hibiscus-like aspect to it. I don't know if they actually had any sort of floral note listed on here, but this one offered enough of that to reach all the way there at that level four mark. Spice, level four, yes. And as I always like to say, it's not that the coffee was spicy, but rather that it offered a fair bit of spices. And given that it had that sort of spiced tea aspect to it, a very strong bergamot-like component to it, Yes, that definitely justified that level four mark. One of the more intense parts of this coffee. Stone fruit, level four. Yes, and going into this one, I had originally expected that maybe the peachiness would be the most defining factor within this one, given that the last Ecuadorian Gesha we had reviewed from Cofea Circular, the Pepe Yihon one, did have a very strong peachiness to it. So I was kind of hoping that this one might fall in line with that as well, but the peachiness was strong, just nowhere near as strong as some of the other very intense fruit factors in this one. Savoriness, level four. Yes, and that's that interesting spiced tea yet again, because I feel like it's maybe a very strong, intense citric spiced tea component to this one, because that's also scoring very high at that level four. And then maybe the most important thing in this tasting wheel, and that's a cleanliness level four, even though a lot of these things were extremely well-defined and oftentimes we like to reserve the level five for geshas, this one definitely didn't have the sort of clarity that I was hoping for from these coffees. I do believe that this one was probably the least clean of those seven coffees that we're going to be discussing from that blind taste test. Even the coffee we'd have from Leucht via the Alita coffee. So that's kind of interesting in that sense. The only other thing that's worth discussing that scored above a level two is the bitterness, which scored a level three. And that's going to be from that very strong citric intensity that was coming from this one. And then the only other thing outside of that worth discussing is the body, which scored at a level one, which is kind of wild to me because this had a very, very delicate body to it, which was, I mean, kind of interesting given the very intense aspects within this one. So. As I'm looking at this tasting wheel, it's a very unique tasting wheel, but I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this one, I would say that this one probably at the end finished towards the bottom in terms of those seven coffees for myself. And a lot of that's going to be because it was a victim of expectation. But outside of that, then the secondary reason is going to be because it didn't offer the same sort of clarity as any of those other coffees. And you're going to see a theme to the coffees that I enjoyed more than others, and that's going to be the clarity. 
Obviously, if I'm reviewing these very high-end coffees, then what I'm really looking for is a very well-defined profile and to have wonderful clarity from it, especially in terms of the Gesha coffees. The Mejorado ones, maybe a little bit of a difference for that, but as I'm kind of looking at this, the intensity was maybe skewed in a direction that I wasn't necessarily enjoying. If we would have had this intensity in terms of the stone fruit components, maybe I would have enjoyed this one a lot more than I ended up enjoying it. But I've kind of mentioned before that when it comes to Colfea Circulores coffees, even though I do enjoy them and I think that they're one of the best coffee roasters in the entire world, it's that bergamot-like aspect that's present in so many other coffees that isn't necessarily a positive for me, but it's one of those things that I take alongside of all of the positives. And when the rest of the positives don't necessarily balance that out and that's as intense as it is, then I'm not necessarily going to enjoy the coffee as much as I would otherwise. And this one right here, even that strawberry aspect, a little too intense for me. This coffee was once again a little too intense for me. I always say that I really like these intense coffees, but we've kind of reached this weird state where these anaerobic natural coffees have gone so far with them that intensity like this isn't necessarily a rare thing anymore. So you experience a lot of coffees like this, and even though this one had better clarity than them, I could say that this is going to be better than the vast majority of natural processed coffees or anaerobic processed coffees that we do review. It was still enough of a takeaway for me not to enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed some of the other coffees we're going to be discussing throughout those seven. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, first direction I would point somebody towards for this one is somebody that likes their very, very intense strawberry because this one still offered enough clarity to give you a washed feel to it while giving you a very strong natural-like intensity. I could even say maybe an anaerobic natural-like intensity because that strawberry was absolutely off the charts for a wash processed coffee. Can safely say I've never experienced a wash processed coffee that has that level of berry forward intensity to it. That also complemented by a lot of other aspects in this one. As you saw in that tasting wheel, there were a lot of things that scored very high, very intense in terms of the sweetness, very long lasting finish, very intense citric component, and even a fair bit of florality as well as stone fruit like aspects to it. So that's basically to say somebody that enjoys their extremely intense coffees with enough clarity to make up for just how vibrant and intense it is. I think I'm gonna leave this review at that. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Gallo, Gallo Geshem WX Wash Processed Ecuador from Cofea Circular. Thank you for watching.